Hi everyone, my name is Samantha Sandalovsky and I'm a student at the University of Technology, Sydney, and this is for Physiological Systems. So I'm looking at the development of the artificial retina of the human eyes, which will allow those legally blind and um, visually impaired to hopefully see or regain vision once again. So before we launch into this research, it's really understand that we it's really important that we understand the anatomy and physiology of the eye. So essentially our eye allows what's going on around us to be processed in our brain. This occurs through the process of seeing or sight and essentially our eye gets the visual communication messages which is then sent to the optic nerve which then converts this to electrochemical signals and then our brain interprets what's going on. This is called the visual cortex. So when I talk about, sorry, when I talk about visual cortex, really important to understand this is where um, the image is being processed so that we can comprehend and understand and make sense of our environment and situation. So the parts of the human eye. So we've got several parts of the human eye which all work together to maintain the process of sight as well as allow the eye to work effectively. So let's start over here with the sclera which is this light blue layer in my diagram of the eye. So the sclera is a white layer and it's extremely opaque and fibrous. This is really strong. It allows the eye to maintain its structure and also allows the sight to occur effectively because we've got this perfectly round sclera. If it was not round, the image would not effectively be processed onto the specific point in the retina, which we're going to discuss in a later segment. We then have the iris, which is um, a combination of smooth muscle cell and sphincter papillae. And this allows the contraction and expansion um, of the eye to allow certain amounts of light in it. Now, importantly, I haven't labeled it because I wanted to talk about it, is our um, ciliary muscles, which are these fibers going down to our lens, which I'll discuss in a moment. So these allow the lens to become really taut or to become very squashed, depending on what we're needing, depending on what we're seeing, and depending on the proximity we are to an object. And if we want to see it in detail, or if we want to see kind of it a mass. So we then have the cornea, which is a very clear tissue. It basically allows light to enter our eye as such, because it's a clear tissue. So here we have our lens. So it's composed of a transparent, what's, well, it's composed of proteins and it's transparent and flexible, which means that it can expand and become really, really squashed depending on what it's needed. Here we go. We have the vitreous humor and the aqueous humor. Now these guys are really important. The aqueous humor is a water-like fluid and this allows interocular pressure to maintain. This also with the sclera helps it to maintain its shape. The vitreous humor is a transparent jelly-like fluid which keeps the retina in place, which is really effective. So our retina, which is what's really important here. So it's a thin layer of tissue which lines the back of the eye with the purpose to receive light and convert this light into electrochemical energy or a signal. So on our retina, we've got this point which is the most which has the highest visual acuity. This is called the fovea. Now the fovea is really important, and this is ideally where we want the image to form. So saying this, how do we see? How does the stuff or the world around us actually enter into our understanding in our brain? So the artificial light, either from a lamp or a light or sunlight, is bounced off an object, which is then reflected into our eye. Now the iris at this point changes its diameter through the papillae sphincter to avoid damage to the retina because we do not want uh, damage to the retina under any circumstances. And then this light goes through the lens and it's then focused directly on the retina, which is where we want it. Ideally, we want it on the fovea. So now understanding how the image tries to get from the eye, well, from the area around us into the eye and to the retina, we now need to understand what the retina is. Now, unfortunately, we don't have time to go through the ganglion cells, the amacrine cells, the bipolar cells, and the horizontal cells. But what's really important to note is these guys are unmyelinated. They do not contain myelination. They're not myelinated, which allows the distortion of the image not to occur. So if we had myelination, the, there would be a higher um, likelihood of our image being distorted as a result of this extra nerve kind of myelination. So it's really important that we don't. So when we have rods and cones, these are really important 
in our vision. So rods are for depth perception and they contain rhodopsin as well as cones do, but rods are for, as I said, depth possession depth perception and we've got 120 million of these in our retina really important so cones here are to see colors specifically the three wavelengths green blue and red again detection of colors and we have a lot fewer of these i think to be honest it's about 30 million codes so we can see that we've got a lot more rods so now we want to bounce into this research. So what is artificial retina? Now, this is really exciting. And it was a joint project, a collaboration between Tel Aviv University in Israel and the Likoping University in Sweden. And they created this retinal prosthesis, which hopefully they're aiming for blind people to regain their sight. So they developed a tiny, simple, proactive film that converts impulses um, into electrical signals. So essentially, this can be implanted into a patient's eye where our retina is, and it's very, very thin, and it's a circular form of photoactive material, allowing tiny, simple photoactive films to conduct visual communication in the visual cortex. Again, so our brain can understand what's going on. So now we want to think to ourselves, what are the benefits? So the device works without any external connectors and the nerve cells are activated without a delay so it means a patient can see the image very quickly and effectively in real lifetime there's no delay which is really awesome the other thing is it can work with working retinas or with un not working retinas so in visually blind people it would not be ideal if it only worked on working retinas which had a couple of them not working which would be um, for visually impaired people but for the legally blind this is incredible because it allows regular um, retinas that cannot work to now work so this is incredible research and i really hope that we see these in the next couple of years hopefully really awesome thank you so much for listening